Each map in Valorant has specific team comps that are meta or function better than others. And in each of those team comps, there's always one agent that just seems irreplaceable for that map. What is going on, ProGuides family? It is your host, Sergeant Frost, and today we will be talking about the one best agent you need to have on each map. Let's not waste any more time and let's jump right into the video. Let's start off with Bind, where we will be recommending Raze. Raze is a mobile and fast entry fragger, which is basically needed to make explosive entrances onto the Bind bomb sites. Raze's Satchel Jump is a great tool to break into bomb sites specifically because of how the bomb sites are structured. Why is this, you might ask? Bind sites have sort of this unique characteristic that once you break past the entrance of the bomb site, it's very hard for the defender to take back control or contest past that point. The reason for this is because the angles that a defender has to expose themselves to on a site defense is often very dangerous. And in most cases, defenders have to retake after taking a few shots at the beginning of an execute. For example, if a player is at mid site on A site bind, defenders have a hard time clearing him because you can't peek him safely and isolate a 1v1 without his teammates being able to cover. But this isn't the only reason Raze is a must pick for this map, as otherwise Jet would easily fit the bill. Raze's grenades are great for clearing out multiple cubby areas around the map, and they create pressure for the attackers and defenders alike. A well-placed Raze grenade can send defenders scrambling or stall a whole site rush since entrances are so choky on bind. Her Boombot is an amazing information gathering tool that despite the nerfs to its price, is still a great tool that can clear out all of hookah or u-haul or showers, which are usually dangerous places to clear traditionally. Because of this, Raze's kit as a duelist makes her uniquely strong on this map with how much control she can gain and how easily she can gain it. And of course, her ultimate is always a scary ordeal that only gets scarier with how narrow the side entrances are. Mastering Raze will pay dividends for you on Bind, and there is no better place to learn her secrets than our website ProGuides.com, where you can get one-on-one -on -one sessions with Radiant and Immortal level coaches tailored to your specific needs. We also have courses from pro players like Tense and Scream, which will teach you the secrets of dominating ranked as well as specializing in the duelist class. If improving fast sounds interesting to you, then make sure to come check us out. Moving on to Ascent, we have to give the spot to Sova, who is simply amazing on this map. Ascent has some of the most famous wallbang spots in the game, and Sova's info gathering greatly assists with maximizing that potential. If you think about one meta wallbang in the game, I think we can all agree that the Odin at B site on Ascent takes the cake. Sova mains love this map because they create immense pressure on defense when they get their hands on an Odin. And even if Sova himself can't capitalize, the map has tons of wall bangable spots that your teammates will surely be able to capitalize on. Which leads me into my other point for why Sova is so dominant on this map. His utility plays so well on defense on this map. His Owl Drone, Recon Bolt, and Ultimate give him immense pressure on the enemy team, and it is perfect for securing early information or kills. Sova's Recon Bolt is also an excellent tool on retakes to sniff out hiding attackers in Postplant, and of course, you can wall bang most walls there as well. Furthermore, Ascent has some really long angles mixed with some close choke points throughout the map, and his Drone and Recon Bolt are great for scouting out the map to make sure it's safe for advancing especially since operators can easily take over the game on this map. There really isn't any other agents that can take advantage of the unique aspects of Ascent as well as Sova can, so he is a must-have for Ascent. Haven is one of the widest, if not the widest map in the game, with the unique feature of having three separate bomb sites. Because of that, one side of the map is often going to have less manpower than the other, and smart lurkers can wreak havoc on this map. While all the Sentinels are favored for their ability to stall a site take, Cypher presents a uniquely versatile skill set that specializes in solo site holds, deep information gathering, and lurking. No other agent in the game can effectively set up their abilities to have presence on one side of the map while being stationed somewhere else. Not only that, Cypher's ability to hold flanks and lurk is also the best in the game. While Killjoy needs to be near her utility for it to activate, it greatly limits her movement around the map. Cypher trips can be placed anywhere you want without proximity limitations. Defenders love to go on long flanks because this map is very wide, so preventing flanks or having information on flankers is very valuable. That's why on Haven, Cypher's trips are the most valuable part of his kit. Cypher's other abilities also give him opportunities to take map control as well. His cages act as mini smokes that are great for securing early map control on A short, and his camera is also a great tool that you can use to check for enemies or just keep tabs on certain areas of the map. Haven is a map that does encourage slow play, so the information game is especially important. Lastly, Cypher's ultimate is actually an amazing ultimate on this map, as knowing enemy locations is a surefire way to immediately locate gaps in the map for you or your teammates to abuse. Before we move on to the next section, we have to get to our question of the day. Today's question is, which map fits your main agent the most? So, this kind of doubles up as two questions, but for me, since my main is Viper, I think Breeze is the best map where she is the strongest and the most versatile. Yet, at the same time, I don't really like Breeze since it's still very new, but at least I know that when I do play, I can have a lot of impact. Let us know which map your main plays the best on in the comment section down below. Now, let's get right back into the video. Breeze is an odd map because it's so new and it's still hard to tell what the real meta is for this map. Many pro teams are still trying to figure out what agents are needed for team comps on Breeze, but it's very clear that one agent is currently reserved a spot on every team, which is Viper. 
Viper is a must-have on Breeze because the regular smokes from other controllers just don't cover enough ground in terms of vision denial. Viper's Wall is the only skill that can cut a sight in half on Breeze by virtue of how big each sight is, and also how much verticality there is. Viper's Wall can also cut mid in half, which is wonderful for splitting a sight or denying information from attackers. Additionally, since the bomb sites are designed to be so big, retakes are very common for this map, and Viper is pretty much a perfect agent to excel in these situations. Her mollies are great for post-plant spike defuses, her smoke and wall gives Viper an initiative in dictating duels, and Viper's pit is especially valuable on this map because of how ridiculously hard it is to contest during retakes. And this isn't only applicable to the attacker side. If Viper uses her ultimate as a team is trying to execute onto her site, her ultimate is a very compelling argument for the enemies to stop right in their tracks and run to the other bomb site. With how great her utility fits with the map's playstyle, Viper is a must pick for baseline success on Breeze. There were a lot of picks we could have talked about for Split, but one agent that is a must have on this map no matter the team composition is Omen. Omen excels on Split because of how well his abilities function in close quarters. A great example of this is how well his blind covers ground with its wide radius on this map. If you position his blind well before you throw it, you can oftentimes cover whole corridors on Split due to how narrow and claustrophobic Split plays as a map. His blind being super useful means that Omen has a lot of extra power that other controller agents just don't have on this map, especially after Astra was nerfed into the ground. Additionally, there are a lot of elevated surfaces on Split that need to be deep smoked when you're attacking. Omen's smokes are perfect for when you need to precisely place a smoke to help you block vision and slip around the map. Omen's mobility is on another level on Split as well. His shadow step allows him to get on top of these elevated off angles that give him a lot more options for traversing the map and catching opponents. And while Split is still a small map, the design makes it so that every corner you clear doesn't give you much more control, which makes Omen's ultimate very scary to play against. Since your area of control is relatively small at all times, Omen can be hiding around you if he does choose to stick a teleport for a lurk. It's a real possibility that Omen could go for an aggressive TP and will only be a few seconds away from pulling off a huge flank. Omen overall is a strong pick on this map because Split's design plays to his kid's strengths a lot more than the other controllers. But then again, Omen is kind of the go-to controller nowadays, so it's not too out of the ordinary. Finally, let's wrap up this video with everyone's favorite map, Icebox. Sage is an absolute must-have on this map and it's not even up for debate. If you want to have access to B-Sight on this map, your Sage needs to be alive or you can forget about it. B-Sight is awkward to take and it's even more awkward to plant on and hold in a post-plant. If your Sage isn't alive to use her utility to get the job done, your chances are slim to none for getting the plant off. Furthermore, Sage Wall is also needed for map control on the defender side as well. Using your wall early vertically in tube to prevent attackers from rushing is basically the meta at this point, and teams rarely stray away from doing so despite Sage Wall being so valuable. Simply put, without Sage, trying to take B-Side is off the table for attacking teams, and it makes defenders' lives much harder without a wall to guarantee early mid control. Similarly with how entryways to Sight are tight, slows on A Maze or B Long can do wonders for delaying a team trying to burst into Sight. And as always, her ultimate is a great tool that works especially well on Icebox, since it's hard to cover dead bodies on Sight with how much cover there is everywhere. Well guys, that's all we have for one agent that you must have on each map. Let us know if you agree with our picks, and if there are any other agents that you think are necessary for certain maps. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos just like this one every single day, and the best way to stay notified of that is by ringing that notification bell. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com to gain some access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I will see you all again in the next video.